What's up, people? Happy Friday. Finally, the week is over. The weekend is here. Um, Today's episode of GH, I liked it. It was real good drama. It was intense. I, I really did like this episode. It was damn good. Um, So let me just start off. Um, Okay, I know I said this probably a billion times, but I'm probably going to say it just one more time. What the fuck is wrong with Franco? Why is Franco on the show? I, I know I say this, but I just really want to analyze this. He adds nothing to the show. I get bored just looking at him. I mean, I'm a big fan of Roger Haworth, and I really do feel like they're wasting him. I mean, damn, like, do they not know how to write a storyline for somebody? I wouldn't care if Franco was on the show, to be quite honest with you, as long as they do something with him. They do nothing with him. And then they're going to sit there. Franco is an idiot. Like he destroyed that room. Just so he could go to jail to help Carly out and talk to Carlos. Like, seriously, if I was Olivia, I would have threw his ass in jail, too. In all seriousness. I mean, like he literally fucked that room up and it is going to cost thousands of dollars to get that room repainted and get it ready. All he does is leech off Carly. I mean, he's staying in that room for free. Like he's staying in the room for free. And speaking of, does Carly even have a house? Like she acts like she has no mansion no more. Like she's always at Franco's room. Last time I checked, bitch, you got a big old mansion that Jack's built for you. Go back to your house. Where's Jocelyn? Is she still in Australia with her father? Like, seriously, go home. I'm just saying. Um, Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. I would never in my life like Olivia with Sonny ever she's she doesn't act like his girlfriend she acts like his mama that's how she acts like she's his second mother or something always you know lecturing him babying him always want to know everything you act like his mother start acting like his girlfriend like seriously um I don't blame Olivia though for moving out of Sonny's house and going back to her apartment I don't blame her because Sonny in a relationship, if something is bothering your partner and it's affecting your relationship with that person, you would want to know what the hell is going on. Sonny's not telling her nothing. So she has a right to be upset about that. I know some people feel like she's nosy and I think she's nosy too. But on this, I think she has a right to know. How come it's fair for Carly to tell Franco, even though Sonny doesn't know she told Franco, but he can't tell Olivia. But in the mob, I can understand him not wanting to tell her stuff, but this is not really mob business. But I can understand him not telling her this, you know, because he doesn't want to put her in the middle of this because their son is a cop. So if he tells her he's trying to give Olivia complete deniability. So that way, if she don't know, she can't be conflicted about whether to tell Dante or not. So I can understand why Sonny won't tell her. But I just feel like, you know, their whole relationship personally is stupid to me. I really don't care for it. I love the way AJ was just haunting the shit out of Sonny today. Like he was seriously taunting him and just, you know, trying to get a rise out of him. And then when Spencer came bust breaking on the door, you know, knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, it was just funny, like, um, Kiki. I don't really like Kiki. I'm starting to warm up to her a little bit. I still don't like her, but I'm trying to warm up to her. I liked her scenes with fake Luke, though. When Luke came in there trying to grab her and stuff like that, and she kicked him in the nuts, I was like, wow. I loved it. It was That was some good shit right there. Um, as far as her and Morgan, I got the feeling that they're trying to get her back with Morgan. I kind of get that vibe, like, because even Ava brought up 
the fact that Morgan might still have some feelings for her or whatever, even if Morgan does still have feelings for Kiki, it's understandable. I, I, I mean, if he got feelings for her still, obviously he would. I mean, hell, that was his first real love. His first wife. I'm pretty sure she probably he probably lost his virginity to her. So she was basically his first everything. So why wouldn't there still be feelings there? I do think he still love her. He probably always going to love her and she probably still loves him. I'm sure she probably does. I mean, hell, instead of calling Michael or anybody else, who did who the first person she called Morgan? That tells you something. I just get this vibe that they're recycling a storyline. This is like from One Life to Live. This is like Bo, Nora, and Clint all over again. Remember how Bo, he was married to Nora first. Nora cheated on him. They got a divorce. And then years later, she started dating Clint and she married Clint. Then her and Bo started having feelings for each other again. They broke up Clint and Nora's marriage. Clint started to get pissed and wanted revenge. I could definitely see something like that happening here with Michael and Morgan and Kiki, where Morgan had Kiki first. They got married. She cheated on him, but this time she cheated with the brother. See, Nora never cheated on Bo with his brother, but they might just be writing it a little bit differently where she cheated with Michael. Her and Morgan annulled their marriage. Now she's with Michael. Like Nora went with Clint. But what if her and Michael ever got married or something like that? And then she got back with Morgan, like Bo got back with Nora. But I just can't see Michael want a revenge on Morgan. I, that's the only difference. Like, I just can't see that because Michael is a very nice kid. He might be upset, but I don't think he's going to go all out like Clint did. But I just get that vibe, though. But I, I am glad that Morgan was there for Kiki. I can understand why Kiki didn't want to tell Michael. Because today's the day of his father's funeral role. He got enough to deal with. I get that. I definitely do get that. Um, what else happened? The PCPD. So they got Carlos in custody. Apparently they got some. Sorry about that. I hate when people just come barging in here. Anyway. Apparently the PCPD got Carlos's DNA from remember when Tracy bashed him over the head with the vase at the quarter main mansion with the vase and blood apparently got onto that. So that's how they got his DNA from, from that and from a water bottle that he drunk from. So now they got proof he was at the quarter main mansion. So he ain't got no choice but to tell them. So now Diane gets there and she's, you know, instructed him on what to do, tell her everything. And now Ava's calling him, telling him not to say nothing. But it's too late. He already, they already know he was there. So he has no choice but to tell them. So she basically threatened Carlos. And then when Carlos told her that he's around police, so he's safe, she threatened Sabrina now. I was like, this bitch, you're really going to threaten a pregnant woman who has really nothing to do with Carlos. They're not together. They're not dating. Like, seriously, Ava, that's a new love. So who knows what the fuck Carlos going to do? He's in between a rock and a hard place at this point, because I'm pretty sure he's going to protect Sabrina. See, this is why Patrick doesn't want Sabrina and the baby around Carlos. This is exactly why, because of shit like this. When you deal with somebody that's in the mob, you get hurt because you're what, what what is the word I'm looking for? You're basically guilty by association, basically. That's what's going on here. So Carlos got to make a decision, like what you going to do? Um. So anyway, Ned comes into the quarter main mansion with the prenuptial agreement. 
and Tracy's telling him she's not going to make Luke sign a prenup. Tracy, she's a smart woman, but she just does the dumbest shit. Why would you not want him to sign a prenup? I don't get people. I'm an advocate for prenups. I just don't, even in real life, like, I just don't get people. What is wrong with a person having a prenuptial agreement? Why do anybody think that if a person wants a prenup, that means you don't trust the person that you're marrying? That's not true. That is completely not true. But you have to look at it from a financial standpoint. Tracy, oh, she has way more assets than Luke. She's probably worth a couple hundred million. He's not worth nothing. All he has is 50 percent co-ownership of the diner. That's all he has. He has no other assets than that. So why would you, a person that's filthy rich and the CEO of a multi-million dollar conglomerate, marry somebody who probably doesn't even have a hundred grand in their account. Why would you do that without a prenup? Knowing that you have children and a grandchild that you need to provide for when you're dead and gone. So why would you leave that all up to chance like that? That's what I'm saying. I just feel like that's stupid. And I'm glad that Ned is there to make sure that Luke don't try no funny shit. But Tracy is being Tracy a dummy. She's going into this thing. I swear, you know, that old saying that love is blind or love can make you blind. You got damn right. Love is making Tracy blind in a motherfucker because all she could see is Luke. Or fake Luke. So Luke comes in near. He sees the prenup. Tracy assures him that there won't be a prenup. So she leaves to go get ready for the funeral. And Luke basically threatens Ned, tells him that if he tries to ruin this marriage, he's going to kill him. And he gave them them real killer looks, too. The funniest part of this episode was when Luke turned around and Spencer walked in talking about Uncle Luke. Face your accuser or something like that. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, Spencer has some balls on him. I'm telling you, that boy got some grapefruits to just come into that house and confront Luke like that. I was like, wow, that boy you got a set on you if you are how old is this kid like seven eight and he's confronting this grown man i was like are you insane boy well he is a cassidy um my only problem is i hate that they have a kid his age a part of this grown storyline like this adult storyline that can potentially get him killed i just hate that but you know it was a fairly good episode today um and please tell me that olivia is not going to keep bringing up the fact that she co-owns that hotel and that connie left it to her in the will because i really don't care what you co-own you could co-own a fucking porter potty i wouldn't give two fucks like you don't have to keep mentioning it that's like when monica used to always mention that the quarter main mansion was her house alan gave it to her that shit got on my nerves like we all know what you own you ain't gotta keep saying it damn that shit gets annoying anyway i hope all you have a wonderful weekend i will see all you monday um i'll see all you monday have a great weekend